Hi there, welcome back to the Adore Beauty YouTube channel. My name's Amy, I'm the senior editor here, and today we're gonna get a little bit personal. I'm gonna take you on my skincare journey because I used to go all hardcore on the actives, I could put anything on my skin, and then I developed perioral dermatitis and I've had to overhaul my entire skincare routine. It's been a lot, so I wanna show you, I guess, the products I'm using now, the mistakes that I've made, the things I've learnt um, for anyone out there who might be going through the same thing. So let's get into it. First of all, a very quick recap. It was probably around this time last year, I was living my life. You know, as a beauty editor, you get to test and trial a lot of different products. I guess my skin type is dry and I've always had relatively good skin, quote unquote. One evening, I decided to trial two new products. One was a liquid exfoliant and the second was an exfoliating serum with alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. I was layering two exfoliating products in the one routine. There was a small voice in my mind that was like, probably shouldn't do that, but I did it anyway. And essentially what happened is I broke my skin barrier. Straight away, as soon as I applied these two products over the top of each other, I had a bright red ring go all around my mouth instantly stinging, hot, burning, visibly red. And essentially, yeah, just broken my skin barrier from using too many active ingredients in the one routine. I was like, okay, lesson learnt. I just stripped back all my actives, went right back to basics, just cleanse and moisturize a sunscreen for about a week. And then when I started to reintroduce my products again, I realized that this kind of red inflammation around my mouth just was not going away. Fast forward to Christmas time, I went home for the holidays. I was flying a lot, a lot of mask wearing, and I just had this stubborn redness, flakiness all around under the mouth and around this kind of I think the correct term is nasio, nasal labio folds, nasal, nasal lab folds. We'll put the term up here, but essentially this area of skin. So bad my family was basically teasing me for having pash rash. Went to the doctor and hey presto, I have perioral dermatitis. Perioral dermatitis is a medical condition. It's a sensitive skin condition. So in this video, I'm not gonna give you any medical advice on how to treat it. You've gotta go and see a skin professional, your GP, to kind of have it looked at medically. But what I can tell you is the changes that I've made in my skincare routine, the kinds of products that I'm using now to kind of keep it at bay. Because the thing is, it's never truly gone. It's now my perioral dermatitis is just my little friend on my shoulder that just pops up, you know, at inconvenient times. But I know now what I can do and the things that I can implement to chill it out, send it on its way and just help to keep my skin looking and feeling its best. First thing is knowing what triggers your perioral dermatitis. For some people, it's hormonal. For some people, it's more contact. So for me, it was contact because it was literally my skin coming into contact with products it didn't like. Things that trigger my flare-ups now, using irritating skincare products would be number one. Not getting enough sleep, funnily enough, if I'm on my period. So those are my triggers. Everyone's triggers will be different. Just knowing why something is happening can also be really helpful. Next, let's talk about my skincare routine. I've kind of found a few swaps and, and products that I stick to now that I feel really comfortable with. So the first thing is just getting the basics down pat. Cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen. If I ever have a flare up, I always go back to just those three. It's about just also being really in tune with your skin, knowing when to to lean in, knowing when to pull back. CeraVe, you're a goddamn lifesaver. My favorite cleanser that I've been using just every night, I don't cleanse my face in the morning. In the evening, I'll do either a micellar water to remove makeup or I'll do a cream, hydrating cream cleanser. I really like this one from CeraVe because it's the hydrating cream to foam. So it's super creamy. It's got like the ceramides, amino acids, hyaluronic acid to really support the skin barrier, but it still emulsifies into a bit more of a foam which gives me that I'm actually cleansing my face feeling. So find a cleanser that works for your skin and stick with it. There's not really much benefit in swapping and changing cleansers. So don't kind of irritate your skin by chopping and changing too much. A comforting moisturizer. I really like this one. I'm pretty sure this is 
meant for your body. It's very sad and body, but I just really like it. It's the moisturizing cream for dry to very dry skin. It just has those same skin barrier supporting ingredients. It just feels really comfy on the skin, not too rich, not too thick, but also not too light. Fragrant 3, just my stock standard morning and night moisturizer. And then sunscreen. You've still got to wear sunscreen. I've brought this one. As you can see, I think the state of this tube says everything I feel about this sunscreen. The Ultraviolet Supreme Screen SPF 50. Find a sunscreen that works for your skin and still wear it. You can't stop wearing sunscreen. You've just got to find one that works for you and this is it for me. The next thing that I've had to do is change the way that I exfoliate. It's a common myth, I would say, that those with sensitized skin can't you know, use actives. You definitely can still do things like vitamin C and exfoliants and vitamin A for that matter, but you've just got to be careful about the formulations that you choose and how you apply it. So in terms of exfoliation, I'm kind of scarred forever by liquid exfoliants and exfoliating serums. I'm triggered by that and I won't be going back anytime soon. But what I found works for me with exfoliation is gentle products. The first is an enzyme exfoliant. That's kind of one of the more gentler ways of exfoliating the skin. So this one, Aesthetics RX Fruit Enzyme Mask. Smells like a tropical cocktail, but I find it's super gentle, but it still gives you that glow that you're after. Or a very gentle physical exfoliant, Dermalogica's Daily Milk Foliant. It's a an oat-based powder exfoliant that is so fine. It also smells a bit like porridge. I just find it really comforting. And I'll probably only use an exfoliant once a week. Again, Again, if I flared up, nada. In terms of serums, best tip that I have received so far actually came from my dermal clinician at James Vivian. Rach was like, Amy, you can still use your l acid. You can still use your serums. But you just need to pop a little bit of barrier cream on your affected area first. And you can see here, this is a beloved product because I've literally oh. cut it open to scrape out the rest. This is the um, La Roche-Posay Cicaplast B five balm in the morning and the evening I will pop a layer of this on any area that I'm concerned about and it's actually going to create a literal buffer between any product that might now land on that area and the skin so that means it's just easier to then go about the rest of my skincare routine and not have to worry that I'm gonna f this spot up so some serums I'm still using and loving SkinCeutical C Ferulic I don't have that with me here right now but that is still one of my favorite vitamin C's as well as the Viviology vitamin C serum. So very potent l acid based serums. When I am applying serums and I just do more of a pressing motion than say what I was doing before which was more like that. Now I'm just a little bit more considered. So those are my morning serums. In terms of hydrating skin barrier serums that just kind of help with the glow now that I'm not exfoliating as much. A niacinamide HA serum. I'm obsessed with the Viviology one. I just find this serum gives me my hydration, but it also gives me yeah that brightening effect with the niacinamide. So again, I like to either cocktail this with my vitamin C in the morning, or I'll just layer them on. Another serum I'm loving for when my skin is feeling a bit fragile is the vitamin E single serum from Alpha H. This is the mini bottle and I know that Joanna and Megan both are obsessed with this serum. It's just a very like a hug and some words of advice from someone you love. That's what this serum is. So again I usually will pop this on in the evening. One other serum that everyone who has sensitized skin needs to know about is the Osmosis Rescue Serum. This serum was recommended to me by a dermal therapist it's got all these um, ingredients in it specifically for epidermal repair but it's a serum that's specifically designed to I guess rescue hence the name uh, a compromised skin barrier so it's very expensive but it's one that I would use when I'm really in the thick of like inflamed rash I would do cleanser moisturizer sunscreen and this is the only serum I would touch then I want to just talk finally about how I've kind of changed my makeup routine with this skin concern because your skin really does affect the kinds of makeup that you choose how the makeup looks on the skin how it wears I've got here a hydrating moisturizer 
moisturizing primer. I'll often use a primer like this. So this one's the MAC Studio Radiance. Something like this almost in place of a foundation because it gives just gives my skin that overall radiance and kind of even tonedness that I want from say a base product. But it's not going to, I guess, gather or sit in any textured skin around here. Skin tints are my best friend. I love the ultraviolet dream screen skin tint as well as MAC Studio Radiance Foundation. I'm looking for base products that have those hydrating, emollient, moisturizing ingredients versus say something that's going to dry down with a matte or skin-like finish. I want dewy finish. <laughs> and then the other thing that I do is probably I rely more heavily on a concealer than a foundation. I find trying to cover something almost emphasizes it more. I prefer to do a really light coverage of foundation and almost avoid this area just like at the very end when there's just minimal product left on my fingers then I might just pat a bit in and then I do concealer so I'll go more on the concealer here around the nose to kind of draw attention away from the area rather than trying to cover it up. My favorite concealer is the Bobbi Brown corrector stick. I'll kind of just dial up the blush. I'll do my brows, a bit of mascara and just products for that overall radiance. I find help me to feel more confident. So to summarize, I guess some final words of wisdom from your perioral dermatitis haver. Figure out what your triggers are and kind of be aware of them, avoid them where possible. Find products that work for you and then stick to them. Your skin will fluctuate, it'll ebb and flow. There'll be great days, there'll be less than great days, but your skin doesn't define you. That, my friends, is what I've learned since developing perioral dermatitis. If you have PD or have any products that have worked for you, things that you've learned about your skin, please do let us know in the comments. I would love to chat to anyone else out there that's going through the same thing. All of the products that I've been using since I've developed, you know, more sensitized skin are available on adorebeauty.com.au. But otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye.